Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, this is your pre-scene reading video for Safewell, our amazing pre-scene. The pre-scene that you are going to use to pass your May or August case study. Yes, amazing. This is the one. Yes. Um, what do I mean by pre-scene reading? Well, I am going to read the pre-scene for you. We're going to follow along on the screen and I'm going to read it out loud for you because lots of people learn in lots of different ways. I want you to soak up the pre-scene. I want you to have a fundamental core knowledge of this pre-scene for the company that we work at, that we love, that we work at, that we're going to make loads and loads of strategic understanding and demonstrate our strategic understanding, make loads of points about that on our case study day, right? So I want you to embrace the fact that you work there. And I know if it was me, if I was reading the pre-scene over and over and over, it would be a little bit boring. It wouldn't go in in my brain in the same way. I wouldn't be able to process it in the same way. So I produced this video for you because it really helps you to soak it in and learn it in a different way. Of course, read the pre-scene. Of course, print it out if you want it, like, like me. <laughs> um, but there is also this opportunity for you to listen, read, see it on the screen, maybe watch when you are um, not running a, running a report at work or listen on a walk or in the gym or in the car on the way to work, on the way back from work. Like, There's lots of opportunities to utilise this video where you can learn a little bit of the pre-scene, okay? You don't have to do it all in one, but I am going to read the pre-scene all together for you, all in one, ready for you. So you've got it here. Keep it safe. Use it. I know I will. Absolutely will use it for my students. And I will use it in a few weeks to remind myself about the pre-scene because you do really need to repeat the pre-scene understanding so that you really do have that core fundamental knowledge, okay? If you are watching on my YouTube channel, hi, I'm Helen. I'm a SEMO revision coach. I'm here to help you get your plaque up on the wall. Yes, I want to get you fully qualified. I want to help you pass your strategic case study exam. Yes, I absolutely am here for it. So if you're watching YouTube, hi, welcome to my inner revision world. And um, this there will be some links in the comments if you wanted to come and join my actual revision course and come and learn how to climb your strategic case study mountain with me. All you have to do is have a look in the comments. If you like this video and you like my style, then oh my gosh, I have got some amazing coaching for you. Um, I have a strategic case study masterclass where I'm going to teach you how to get 100 marks on your strategic case study without cramming and crying, right? That is the key. I don't want you to have a stressful revision. Um, phase I want you to have a strong prepared smart revision phase and I coach my students through that and we climb the case study mountain if you would like to come to my free masterclass to see and get a little bit of a taste of my coaching then the link is down below and if you want to come and join my strategic case study mountain climb revision course you're absolutely welcome to do that as well the link is below what a surprise <laughs> If you are already a strategic case study mountaineer and you are already climbing your strategic case study mountain with me, yes, you know you're in the right place. Boom, we're going to get your plaque up on the wall with this amazing pre-scene. So um, utilize this video, soak up this video, watch it a number of times. It is great to have you if you're on YouTube or you're inside my revision world already is great to coach you i am absolutely obsessed with the strategic case study i want you to pass your strategic case study with confidence with the right exam techniques and with an exam day strategy they're really really important ways um to demonstrate your strategic understanding for being the strategic finance lead at safewell that is all you would need to do okay you work at safewell and i'm here to read you the pre-scene introduce the pre-scene to you so let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Are you ready? Here we go. This is your strategic case study exam for the May 2024 and August 2024. This is your pre-scene material and we work for a company called Safewell. I'm going to call it Safewell. I'm not sure what you call it, but I call it Safewell. You know what it looks like, right? I am absolutely just going to read word for word your pre-scene. I don't want to add anything to it right now. There will be other videos and pre-scene analysis for you to come. But this one is really reading it word for word so that you get the exact correct pre-scene material. So I'm going to follow. We're going to follow on the screen and I'm going to read word for word. So let's go. On page two, you have the contents page. And the introduction. 
Safewell is a quoted company that offers advice and support on corporate security and enterprise risk management. The company offers a number of different services, ranging from the provision of security guarding to consulting on enterprise risk management. Consultancy activities range from advising on systems to counter security threats, both physical and cyber, to the provision of intelligence and investigations intended to address evolving threats. You are a senior manager in Safewell's finance function. You report directly to the board and you advise on special projects and strategic matters. Safewell operates on a global basis with regional offices in co several countries. Its head office is in Barland, a developed country that has an active and well-regulated stock exchange. Barland's currency is the B-dollar. Barland requires companies to prepare their financial statements in accordance with International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS. On page three, we're talking about the industry and a little bit of an introduction to the security industry. The modern day security industry dates back to the middle of the 19th century. Previously, security companies provided little more than physical protection for individuals and for property. By the mid 1800s, security companies started to offer intelligence led services, primarily focused on protecting clients from loss. These services included counter espionage and fraud investigation. Typically, a major security company will offer some or all of the following services. Service one, on-site guarding. Clients are often outsource their physical security arrangements to security companies. On-site guarding can take several forms, including staffing reception desks and other entrances, checking visitors' credentials, patrolling clients' premises and detecting intruders, providing security staff for retail shops, either in uniform or in plain clothes, to discourage, to discourage threat theft of goods. Excuse me. Security staff report any suspected criminal activity to the police. They do not have law enforcement powers. Service two, mobile guarding. Mobile guarding uses vehicle patrols to visit client premises at random intervals while they are unoccupied. Security guard checks that security guards check that doors are locked and there are no signs of forced entry. Guards check in by phone or radio to confirm that a check has been undertaken and that everything is secure. Security service three, remote services. Clients can pay to have their electronic security systems monitored when their premises are unoccupied. Security companies have control rooms that receive any notifications of intrusions from client systems. Staff are trained to respond to any alarm, usually by notifying the police and a designated contact, such as a manager, who has a key to the property. Co uh, security service number four, corporate investigations. Most large security companies can carry out specific investigations tailored to a client's needs, for example, counter espionage, including the investigation of suspicions that intellectual property has been copied and is being abused by a third party. Fraud investigations, including the collection of evidence relating to suspicions that an employee or other stakeholder has defrauded the company. Vetting potential appointees, such as individuals who are being considered for appointments to senior positions within an organisation. These investigations will involve a thorough investigation of that person's background and character. Security companies employ trained investigators to carry out these assignments. Security service number five, risk management. Security companies can provide consult consultancy support, advising manage management concerned concerning strategic risks, both in terms of identification and mitigation. Security companies compete with other consultants, such as management consultants, for such work. Security companies generally focus on risk management and the development of controls and other procedures for the management of risks. Security Service 6. Security Assessment. Security companies are often asked to evaluate existing corporate security systems, both physical security and cyber security. Such evaluations can be based on the study of the systems that are in place or they can involve 
attempts to breach systems through the identification and exploitation of weaknesses. Security Service 7, training. Security companies can provide courses for management and staff at all levels within the organisation, ranging from practical training for the client security guards to training in enterprise risk management for senior management and board members. Going on to page five, some security companies combine security services with facilities management rather than focusing exclusively on security services. For example, Growbar Facilities provides its clients with a wide variety of services such as cleaning and property maintenance, in addition to on-site guarding, mobile guarding and remote services. Safewell, us, Safewell has the second highest global revenue of all security companies. On page five, there is a graph showing the top 10 security companies by global revenue in B dollar billions. So this is a big market, right? You can see Growbar facilities at the bottom with the largest share, Safewell second, Brotto third, Gwalda fourth. Staying on page five, some security companies specialize in intelligence-led services, Rosomto, Whiskey Prove, and Poldor Safe focus on advising and training clients. Mititron, Kinetect Alarm and Tremwell Guard focus on protecting clients, staff and property through ongoing, through on-site guarding, mobile guarding and remote services. Gwalda, Roto and Safewell follow, focus on security, offering both physical protection and intelligence-led security. Obviously, just the caveat, like you might say the words differently to me. It, it's like it is what it is. You learn them your way. And this is how I'm going to pronounce them. OK. <laughs> On page five, we talk about the physical security services. Physical security services involve the provision of trained staff to undertake one or more security duties. These range from staffing the reception area in clients' offices, checking the credentials of staff and visitors seeking entry, to the provision of roving patrols in warehouses and factories, asking potential intruders to explain their presence. Many countries have legislation that requires security staff to be licensed if they are employed to carry out frontline work on behalf of the third parties. Licenses are required for guarding property against theft, damage or unauthorised access, Operating surveillance equipment such as closed circuit television, CCTV feeds, to guard premises or protect people from assault, and holding keys on behalf of third parties. Licenses are granted to applicants who have completed an approved training course and have passed the course assessments. The government's licensing authority then, then carries out a criminal record check, which confirms that applicants for licenses have not been convicted of offences that are inconsistent with security work, such as crimes involving dishonesty or violence. Licence holders must inform the licensing authority if they are charged or convicted of a criminal offence. Licenses are not normally required for security staff who are employed directly by the company that uses their services. Global security companies such as Safewell and Growbar Facilities tend to restrict their provision of physical security services to countries where their staff are unlikely to be at serious risk of physical harm. Their security services are not expected to carry weapons such as firearms, pepper spray and batons. Security staff do not have the same powers as police officers. Police officers have the power to arrest individuals if they have reasonable grounds to believe that they have committed criminal offences. Most security companies train their staff to contact the police if they suspect that a crime is being committed and to observe and record events from a safe distance where possible. Security staff are not normally expected to use force to subdue a theft or attacker. The law does, however, permit all citizens, regardless of whether they are employed in a security role, to use reasonable force when acting in self-defence or when apprehending criminals who would otherwise escape justice. Security companies carry out their own risk assessments before committing staff. 
They may refuse to accept assignments that would place staff in physical danger unless that danger can be mitigated through training or the adoption of safe working practices. For example, staff being asked to patrol warehouses where goods are being loaded and unloaded should be issued with high visibility jackets, safety helmets and steel toed work boots to reduce the risk of injury in that environment. Reception staff in city centres offices may require a little more than uniforms that identify them as security staff and radios to which sum to summon assistance. We are on page six now. We're going to talk about the next service, intelligent led services. Intelligent led services tend to require specialist consultants. Clients will usually be seeking advice on, spe on specific matters that require considerable expertise. For example, a client might want some reassurance that its security systems are effective and could ask a security company to attempt to gain access without being detected. That could involve using a team of security experts to use the same techniques that would be employed by criminals or unscrupulous business rivals to gain access, unauthorised access. Evidence of weaknesses might be presented to senior management, perhaps by showing them photographs of sensitive documents. Clients might make a similar request to test the security of online systems. Again, consultants would apply the same techniques used by hackers in order to attempt to access or disrupt the operations of clients' IT systems. The objective of such an exercise is hopeful, hopefully to confirm that the targeted systems and files are not vulnerable, although a successful attempt to hack the system will alert the client as to the system's shortcomings and allow a solution to be developed. Assignments may be relatively unstructured. For example, a client may be considering locating a factory in a foreign country that is emerging as an inexpensive location in which to do business. The client may be concerned about both the financial risks associated with investing in this country and the health and safety risks associated with asking managers and staff to base themselves there. A security company might use a combination of desk research and site visits to investigate the risks and to provide the client with a report on the political, economic and health and safety risks. Security companies recruit consulting staff from a variety of different backgrounds, taking account of their services that they offer and the associated skills that are required. Training and experience from disciplines such as auditing will be useful in ensuring that staff can offer expertise in such areas such as IT security and fraud investigation. Some assignments also require strong interpersonal skills. For example, the easiest way to enter a secure site is to persuade a security guard to permit access. If consultants can trick guards into letting them in, then so can, then so can intruders. Similarly, hackers often ask members of staff for their usernames and passwords and to use these IT and use these to access IT systems. Intelligence-led security services tend to focus on strategic or governance matters and are intended to provide clients boards with the assurance that they require with regards to strategic or governance risks. The open-ended nature of the work that these firms can undertake often puts them in competition with management consultants, accountancy firms and other professional entities. Right, we are on page seven now, halfway through page seven. I'm just going to pause here where well, we're going to pause because that is the piece on the market and the industry. And now on from page seven to the rest of the pre-scene, um, we have safe well specific. This is where you absolutely need to focus your attention and know these core fundamentals from, from safe well. We've got a great introduction and you might need some of this information absolutely for sure, but you definitely need from page seven and the safe well information. So we're going to take a little pause and get a drink, take a deep breath and um, let's focus on how we're going to learn the safe well piece. Right, let's learn about Safewell. Are you ready? Page seven. Safewell was founded in 1920 as a security company specialising in providing guards to protect clients' premises. 
The company continues to offer physical security services, currently employing 460,000 security staff worldwide, operating in 74 countries. Safewell has been a major provider of intelligence-led risk management services since the 1970s. The company now employs 22,000 risk management consultants, most of whom are based in the company's head office in Barland's capital city and at four regional offices around the world. Risk management consultants expect to travel to assignments, enabling the company to provide almost worldwide coverage for its intelligence-led services. Safewell has completed consultancy and training projects in 132 countries over the past 20 years. The company was quoted on the Barland Stock Exchange in 1991. Safewell, Safewell provides its own training programs for security guards, ensure, ensuring that all exceed the minimum requirements for licensing purposes in their home countries. The company provides ongoing training to ensure that all staff, all security staff are aware of their responsibilities and can fulfil those in a safe and professional manner. Safewell always also pays well. Safewell also pays well, exceeding company competitors' hourly rates of pay by as much as 10%. <clears throat> Safewell provides the following physical security services. So our security services are, number one, reception. Large office buildings usually have security measures in place to ensure that only employees and legitimate visitors can obtain access. These measures might include requiring staff to operate a gate using their pass staff pass or identity card and asking visitors to sign in at a reception desk where they are given temporary passes after having their credentials checked. Safewell uses experienced staff to provide reception services because intruders could gain access to sensitive information and could pose a threat to senior managers. Our security service number two is site security. Companies often secure employ security guards to pro protect factories and storage sites to prevent theft and safeguard staff. Procedures can include checking the credentials of employees and visitors who wish to access the site, checking vehicle loads to ensure that dispatches of goods have been authorised and patrolling sites to check that everything is in order. Our security... Oh. Many of Safewell's site security staff have previously served in the military, and have the ability to use their initiative when faced with a challenge. That's site security, number two. Number three is retail security. Supermarkets and other large retailers can lose significant amounts of goods and therefore revenue due to theft by shoppers and shop staff. Safewell can provide support by providing teams of security staff to deter the theft. Security officers can be uniformed in order to provide visible deterrence or dressed in plain clothes to mingle with customers in order to watch covertly for threat for theft. Safewell shop security staff are trained to gather evidence that can be used to pr prosecute thieves. They can call the police when they identify cases of theft. On page eight, we are on. Safewell provides the following intelligence-led security services. <clears throat> Risk advisory service. Safewell's clients often seek independent advice on the risks associated with strategic business decisions. External specialist consultants might be better informed about potential risks and may be able to alert the board to risks that have been overlooked. Safewell maintains a detailed database of the threat profiles associated with doing business in 97 countries and so can advise on strategic matters associated with internal expansion, either through investment or by conducting new business with foreign suppliers or customers. Safewell's consultants are also experienced in developing risk assessments associated with other factors such as entering new industries or launching new products. The firm has considerable expertise in gathering information from online sources, including social media and the dark web. If requested, Safewell's consultants can determine whether there is a, any reason to believe that the client's business is under threat. Is under threat. 
For example, there could be indications that environmentalists have targeted a client for protests. Our next intelligent-led service is corporate investigations. Safewell can plan and conduct a tailored investigation to address any concerns that clients have with respect to operations or business relationships. Investigations can focus on a wide range of possible issues. Issue 1. Suspected fraud by a member of staff. Fraud investigations may seek to identify the culprit if assets have gone missing. Clients may also have a clear idea of the identity of a fraudster, but wish to gather evidence that would justify dismissal or the pursuit of criminal charges. Issue 2. The accuracy of information provided in this in the course of a business relationship, such as checking whether royalty payments are being made in full. Issue three, investigating the accuracy of information provided by a key job applicant, including the validity of claims about education and prior work experience. Another investigation, intelligence-led service, penetration testing, SafeWell's consultants can evaluate client security systems, both physical and online. Security checks can involve documentation and reviewing control systems, looking for weaknesses and advising on improvements. Penetration tests of IT systems can involve the use of social engineering to obtain access to client systems. For example, consultants might attempt to trick staff into revealing their IT security system login details. Systems are clearly at risk if they succeed. Intelligence-led service or training. SafeWell's consultants are frequently asked to provide training to update technical skills and knowledge of client management. Client managers in roles that, excuse me, let me start again. SafeWell's consultants are frequently asked to provide training to update technical skills and knowledge of clients managers in roles that involve risk management. Clients also seek training to inform and equip senior managers and directors who have responsibility for supervising controls and risk management procedures. All of SafeWell's consultants have the necessary skills to facilitate training courses in their area of expertise. Using its consultants in this role enables SafeWell to ensure that its training courses make the best possible use of its consultants' experience. SafeWell relies on both physical and intelligence-led security services. The following analysis is based on the company's financial performance for the financial year ended 31st December 2023. Okay, we're going on to page 10 for this. So we have a graph on page 10. Oh, we have two graphs. The first graph is around our revenue, our revenue as SafeWell. 85% of our revenue is generated from physical security services. And 15% of our revenue is generated from intelligence-led security services. That is as at December 31st, 2023. And the second graph is around our operating profit. So as at 31st of December, 2023, our operating profit um, split was 74% physical security services and 26% of our operating profit came from intelligence-led security services. Um, let's go on to page 11, extracts from SafeWell's annual report. SafeWell's mission, vision and values. Our mission. SafeWell's mission is to provide clients with the security solutions and services that they require in order to be able to focus on their core businesses. Our vision. SafeWell's vision is to be the security industry's most trusted service provider. Our values. SafeWell is responsive. SafeWell is innovative. SafeWell treats its employees with respect and cares about their safety. Also on page 11, we have the board of directors. Um, apologies in advance if any of my pronunciation is incorrect, but hopefully this still helps. And please understand the names yourself as well. So on the board of directors, we have the non-executive chair, Dr. Pratima Thakili. Pratima. Pratima holds a doctorate in finance. She has a, she has a successful career in banking, including a period in which she joined as chief executive for a major commercial bank. 
She retired from banking in 2020, joining Capital City University as a visiting professor in banking and financial services. Pratima joined Safewell as non-executive chair in 2022. Greg is our Chief Executive Officer, CEO, Greg Hange. Greg is a qualified accountant. He trained as an auditor with a large accountancy firm, rising to the position of that firm's managing partner for Barland. Greg left the firm to join Safewell as CFO in 2019. Greg was promoted to the position of Safewell CEO in 2021. We have a Director of Physical Security Services, Ba Jing. Ba is the Director of Physical Security Services. Ba has a master's degree in human resource management. She has worked as a human resources manager in several large companies. She joined Safewell as a senior manager in human resources in 2018 with specific responsibility for physical security staff. Ba was promoted to Safewell's board of directors as physical security services in 2022. We have the Director of Intelligence-led Security Services, Murat Aydin. Murat has a degree in computer science and spent his early career working in systems development for a major bank. He also has served as a computer audit specialist with a major accountancy firm. Murat joined Safewell in 2016 as a senior consultant in IT security. Murat was promoted to Safewell's Board of Director of Intelligence-led Security Services in 2021. Oh, going on to page 12 now. We have our Chief Financial Officer, CFO, Sabine Ansel. Sabine has a degree in economics and is a qualified accountant. She has worked for several manufacturing companies and spent several years working overseas before returning to Barland in 2015 to join Safewell as a Senior Manager in Finance. Sabine was promoted to CFO in 2022. We have a Director of Legal, Risk and Business Eth Business Ethics, John, John Sajowski. John has a bachelor's degree in law and a master's degree in international law. He is a qualified lawyer. He spent much of his career working for a commercial law firm before moving to an insurance company as its in-house lawyer. John joined Safewell's legal department in 2019. John was promoted to Safewell's board as direct, uh, excuse me, he was promoted to our board as Director of Legal Risk and Business Ethics in 2020. We have a senior independent director called Pro Professor Martine Anderson. Martine has had a successful academic teaching and researching in international business before being promoted to the position of assistant principal at Central City Technical University. Martine retired from academia in 2020. Martine joined our board as Senior Independent Director in 2021. We have an independent non-executive director called Nils Fall. Nils was a senior actuary within, within an insurance company, being promoted to Assistant Director in 2015. He retired from the insurance industry in 2019. He has an active interest in the arts, currently serving, serving as a board member of Barland National Opera. Nils joined our board in 2023. We have another exec, an independent non-exec director, Magdalena Marcosa. Magdalena has worked in procurement for a major car manufacturer. She has held a number of specific roles, including being responsible for the smooth operation of the manufacturer's supply chain. Magdalena retired from full-time employment in 2019. She has since served on the board of a major international charity. Magdalena joined our board in 2022. On page 13, we have the board responsibilities laid out in the yellow table. Please um, review this table at your leisure as well. I will read it out. Greg is our CEO. The four members that report into Greg are Bay, which is the Director of Physical Security Services, Murat, which is the Director of Intelligence-led Security Services, Sabine, who's the CFO, and John is the Director of Legal, Risk and Business Ethics. Bai's responsibilities are business development for physical security clients, human resource management for physical security staff. Murat's responsibilities are business development for intelligence-led security clients and human resource management for intelligence-led security staff. 
Sabine's responsibilities are financial reporting, management accounting and treasury. John's responsibilities are safe, health and safety, compliance and enterprise risk management for Safewell. If we scroll down, we can see the green table, which has our board committees, audit, risk, remuneration, nomination. And you can see the non-execs, which non-execs are on which board committee. Please review this green table at your leisure. SafeWell's chief internal auditor reports to the convener of the audit committee. On page 14, we're going to discuss, um, I'm going to read out SafeWell's principal risks in the table on page 14. Okay, I'm going to read you the risk impact and then the risk mitigation for each one on this table, each at a time. So the risk impact one, both physical security services and intelligence led security services rely heavily on SafeWell's ability to recruit and train large numbers of suitable staff. Staffing needs are constantly growing, both in terms of staff numbers and the skills that are required for the increasingly sophisticated assignments that SafeWell agrees to undertake. How we mitigate this risk? SafeWell has strong human resource policies in place to deal with screening new staff to ensure that they have the required skills, experience and character. SafeWell monitors staff turnover closely and is responsive to emerging concerns around staff retention. The firm provides industry-led training and rewards for staff at all levels. Risk impact number two, the nature of physical security and some intelligence-led services expose staff to health and safety risks. Physical security assignments can require staff to work in dangerous environments and may require employees to confront intruders. Consultants on intelligence-led assignments may be exposed to health risks associated with foreign travel. They may also be required to stimulate, simulate breaches of clients' properties. The way we mitigate those risks are, all assignments are subject to rigorous risk assessments. SafeWell refuses contracts where the risks are deemed unacceptable. Staff are trained to operate in specific high-risk environments as appropriate to their assignments and are issued with all necessary safety equipment. Consultants are briefed on all risks associated with travel and are provided with all necessary vaccinations. There are strict protocols in place to address risks arising from similar breaches. Um, our next risk impact is... <clears throat> Providing risk management services exposes SafeWell to reputational risk in the event of an alleged failure. The provision of physical ser security services creates the risk of inju injury to security staff, client staff and third parties, including bystanders and alleged perpetrators. There is also the risk associated with the loss or destruction of property or premises that are under SafeWell's protection. Intelligence-led security services could leave the company's reputation at risk in the event of alleged allegations that clients were advised poorly or that investigations were conducted and reported in a, ne 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 <laughs> in a negligent manner. Sorry. Uh, the way we mitigate those risks of reputation risks are SafeWell's risk assessments prior to the acceptance of any assignment take the risk of reputation damage into consideration. Assignments may be refused if the risk of alleged failure is high. Assignments, both physical security and intelligence led, are staffed by suitably trained and experienced guards and consultants. Additional training and equipment are provided where necessary. Consulting teams engaged in intelligence-led security services are well supervised and any reports that are to be presented to clients are reviewed by senior staff before they are submitted. Another principal risk we have is SafeWell enters into complex, long-term and high-value contracts with clients, particularly in relation to physical security services. Contract terms can be prove onerous, onerous. Contract terms can prove onerous. For example, foreign contracts may be billed in clients' currencies. How do we mitigate this risk? All contracts are, su are subject to detailed review by our in-house legal staff. Ongoing contracts are reviewed regularly and any adverse issues are identified and managed where possible. 
Another principal risk for us on page 14 is Safewell is subject to information security risks. The company holds files relating to the security and the strategic management of many large clients. How do we mitigate this risk? The company has invested heavily in the latest cyber controls and defences. All risks are monitored on an ongoing basis and mitigated immediately. Now going on to page 15, we have our financial statements. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read the financial statements and make and say some of the numbers for you, but please review these at your leisure. You need to know some of these numbers on here, okay? So we have a consolidated profit, consolidated statement of profit or loss or an income statement for the year ended 31st of December. In 2022, our revenue was 15,830. Our operating costs were 13,378. In 2022, our operating profit was 2452. Our finance costs were 200. Our tax expense was 360. And for 2022, our profit in the year was 1892. For 2023, our revenue was 16840. Our operating costs were 14146. In 2023, our operating profit was 2694. Our finance costs was 200. And our tax expense was 399. Our in 2023, our profit for the year was 2095. So I would summarize that and say our revenue was 15830 and went to our revenue went to 16840. Our profit for the year was 1892 and it's gone to 2095. <laughs> And you can see the next statement of consolidated statement of changes in equity. You can re please review these numbers at your leisure. You can see we made a profit for the year. We paid out a dividend and we also have a loss on our currency reserve and loss on translation. If we scroll down to page 16, we can see our balance sheet or our cons consolidated statement of changes of financial position in, in 2022 and 2023. Again, please review these at your leisure. I'm not going to read these ones for you, um, but please review these on page 16. We have non-common assets. We do have goodwill. We do have intangible assets. We have the normal current assets, uh, equity. Uh, we have a borrowing, a long-term borrowing, and we have our normal cu current liabilities. Okay, on page 17 is an extract from our competitors' financial statements. They've picked one of our competitors, Brotto. Brotto Security Group is one of four security companies based in Barland that offers both physical security services and intelligence-led services like us. Like Safewell, it focuses on security and does not offer other types of services such as facilities management. Safewell and Brotto Security frequently compete for the same assignments. Good to know. Okay, so we're on page 17. We have a consolidated statement of profit or loss for Brotto for 2022 and 2023. We have a consolidated statement of changes in equity. We can see that they also made a profit. They also paid a dividend and they also had a loss on translation of their currency reserve. Please review these numbers at your leisure. Um, page 18, we have Brotto's consolidated statement of financial position or their balance sheet again please review these at your leisure you can see that they also have goodwill other intangible assets they have cash in the bank they have a long-term liability of borrowings just like us <laughs> okay and um, page 19 we have a graph showing the share price history of us safe well share price over the last five years you can see the share price has been as high as 93 and as low as about 40 and we are currently sat on around about 40 again so interesting graph in my opinion um a safe wells beta is 0 0.88 okay this one's going to come up in a question by the way <laughs> that's that's my prediction <laughs> okay let's scroll down for a little bit for the news articles now these news articles are important there's an important part of your pre-scene guys okay um, so I'm going to read them word for word, but I do um, recommend you doing your own analysis and brainstorming of what these mean for you in your exam question. Okay, so news story number one is from the Barland Telegraph. 
New rules require better reporting of digital risks. The Barlandian Stock Exchange has announced new disclosure rules that will require all companies quoted on the exchange to include disclosures on digital security and strategy in their annual reports. These new rules are are a response to recent scandals involving major corporations who have failed to protect customers' personal data or who have been subject to successful cyber attacks. The new legislation will require companies to provide annual disclosures to confirm that they have adequate securities in place in relation to digital security. Companies will have to confirm that risks have been assessed and that responsibility for their management has been allocated to appropriate managers. Companies will also be required to disclose details of events in which attempts were made to breach digital security, regardless of whether those attempts were successful. Those disclosures will indicate whether those events have revealed shortcomings in the company's system and controls. A spokesperson for the Barlandian Stock Exchange commented that these new disclosures will be valuable in informing shareholders about the risks related to digital security. The new disclosures will become mandatory for financial years ending on or after 31st of December 2025. We've got a couple of years for that one. That's the article on page 20. The article on page 21 is also from the Barland Telegraph. Steady demand for forensic accountants. The word forensic is generally associated... Oh, sorry, I can't say that word very well. Can I? Let me start again. (laughs) The word forensic is generally associated with the application of scientific methods to the collection of evidence that can be presented in court. Forensic accounting is a branch of accounting that deals with the collection and presentation of evidence that might be presented in either a civil or criminal case. Civil cases might involve drafting reports that attach values to claims that may be in dispute. For example, a business could pay a forensic accountant to estimate the losses attributable to an accident that has interrupted production. That estimate could be used to negotiate compensation with the business's insurer and might be presented in court in the event that a satisfactory agreement cannot be reached. Criminal cases might require a combination of both accounting skills and the rules of evidence that apply in the criminal court. For example, if a member of staff is under suspicion of fraud, a forensic accountant might gather evidence by reading the files on a suspected company's laptop. A forensic accountant would have the skills required to examine the laptop in such a way that the suspect cannot complain that files have been altered or that evidence has been fabricated. Forensic accounting may take can take many different forms and forensic accountants are always in demand. Most forensic accountants specialise in investigations relating to valuing losses arising from civil cases or gathering evidence for use in criminal cases. One aspect of forensic accounting that is growing in demand is the provision of litigation support, which can involve the use of forensic accountants who specialise in appearing in court as expert witnesses that may involve giving evidence that clarifies the meaning of reports and investigations to make them clear and understandable to the jury. That's the article on page 21. On page 22, we have the Barlin Daily News. Bank security guard tackles robbers. (laughs) A bank security guard was congratulated by senior police officers for his part in apprehending two ruthless bank robbers. The guard was on duty at the entrance to the Glowtown branch of Barland's Prudential Bank, where two masked robbers armed with batons pushed past him and demanded that bank staff surrendered the cash from their tills. The security guard activated the bank's alarm and disarmed both robbers, subduing them and tying their wrists together until the police arrived and took charge of the scene. No customers were injured. The the security guard served in the Barlandian army, where he was trained in unarmed combat. The professor of law at Central City University told the Barland Daily that security guards do not have the same powers of arrests as the police. They are, however, citizens and are permitted to use reasonable force to defend themselves and others from violence and to prevent criminals from escaping. It is highly unlikely that the security guard could be charged with assault in these circumstances unless the force used to subdue the robbers was deemed excessive. Interesting articles. Oh, I love them. 
Um, that was page 22. Page 23, we have another Berlin Daily News report. Justice ministers deny that police are underpaid. Berlin's justice minister has been criticised for underpaying members of the police service. Retention rates are declining across the country, with experienced office officers resigning in response to poor pay and stressful working conditions. The minister expressed concerns that it is difficult for the police service to remain competitive with private sector employees. Excuse me, with private sector employers. Let me start that again. The minister expressed concerns that it is difficult for the police service to remain competitive with private sector employers. For example, security companies frequently offer higher salaries for shorter working hours. Many police officers find it difficult to resist such opportunities. Similar concerns have been noted by Berlin's military. Fewer members of the Army, Navy and Air Force are extending their contracts to remain in their chosen services. Again, many are tempted to buy superior rewards being offered in the private sector. A government source admitted that the loss of experienced personnel was a problem, particularly when they have specialist skills such as pilots or medical staff. Oh, that's the article on page 23. We have another article. There is a lot of these, right? This is why these are really important. Well done for staying to the end, guys. <laughs> on page 24, we have an article from the Barland Daily. Take care when installing security cameras. Oh, homeowners have been warned to take care when installing security cameras on their properties. These devices are becoming increasingly popular, being cheap to buy and easy to install. Sensors built into the cameras detect motion and trigger, both audio and video recording, with the resulting files being uploaded to the cloud. These cameras discourage burglars and other intruders, but there are concerns about the legality of their recordings. In some circumstances, homeowners may be breaking strict laws designed to protect privacy and personal data. Barland is one of the many countries that protects access to individuals' personal data. Legislation makes it a crime to collect data without permission. Data includes video footage collected by closed circuit television, CCTV systems. The law was intended to regulate the operation of commercial CCTV systems, but it also applies to domestic security cameras. A lawyer advised the Barland Daily that homeowners should check the positioning of their cameras. Their is unlikely to be a problem if their field of view is restricted to the homeowner's property. The homeowner could be at risk of prosecution if the camera's coverage includes public property or worse, private property belonging to somebody else. The camera should not, for example, be able to record activity on public pavements or in the neighbor's garden. That is the article on our page 24. That is our pre-scene. That is the pre-scene reading, amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so I know you might not think it's as amazing as I do, but I had so many firework moments during reading that one. Um, so I will be absolutely giving you some pre-scene analysis. And if you're inside of the strategic um, case study mountain climb course with me, then you're going to get a lot of pre-scene material and analysis and lots of things that we're going to talk about in future videos. But um, that's the pre-scene reading. I hope you have enjoyed and soaked it up and taken some bits from it. And now, obviously, you need to go away and do your own brainstorming, your own analysis, and um, feel free to save this video for future reference. I know I'll use it again. I encourage you to listen to it and watch it again, as well as reading of course yes but utilize the different learning styles and the opportunities here given to you and um, if you would like some more coaching of course please you're, you're very welcome to come to my next masterclass on how to pass your strategic case study with 100 marks and you're very welcome to come and join my strategic case study mountain climb course grab the five-week revision program to give you proven strategic framework for strategic case study we're going to do the strategy we're going to talk about structure we're going to talk about exam techniques all of these things are here inside the revision course for you and i can't wait i absolutely can't wait to coach you if you would like some strategic case study coaching for your may or august case study sittings yes i have my SEMA plaque up on, the, up on the wall i want to help you get your plaque up on the wall too i'm absolutely here for it i'm absolutely obsessed i don't mind at all this is a great pre-scene there's loads of fireworks, loads of things that I think could absolutely be asked. And I want to help you practice 
those questions, practice that thinking so that you can walk in and write an amazing strategic case study script that gets you 100 marks. Yes, you can do this. If you want some help, click on the link in the comments. There's a lot of options for you and I hope to work with you soon. Good luck. And if you're in the Strategic Case Study Mountain Climb course already, then go and watch the next videos to see your pre-scene analysis. Thanks, guys. See you later.